Well, the, the oh. pulpit mic's too loud. Thank you. It's too loud. Why'd you hit me? I'm not the look on I want to know you, friend. All right. The biblical know you. Well, glory to God. Here it is. Do uh, you really? <laughs> here we are here again on Sunday, and we've been studying out of the book of 2 hey, Samuel, you, and we're at chapter 17. All right. 2 Samuel. Samuel 17. Uh, we actually had read all the way through 22, but I'm going to start, I'm going to back up a little bit. Uh, in verse 17 of 2 Samuel chapter 17, uh, verse 17. 2 Samuel 17, 17. Jonathan and, and uh, Himeaz hide. Now, now Jonathan and uh, uh, Himeaz stayed at Enrogel, for they might not be seen to come into the city, and a witch went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom, but, but they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in Baharim, which had a well in his court whither they went down. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. When Absalom's servants came to the woman, to the house, they said, Where is Ahimeaz and Jonathan? They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told David, King David and said to David, Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus Ahithophel counsel against you. And David arose and all the people that were with him and they passed over Jordan by the morning light and they lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. Okay. I wanted to read all that. You know that Jonathan and Amahaz are, are, are spies, basically. Right. They, they are the... Uh, Jonathan was the son of the high priest, uh, a Abiathar, a, a, a and uh, he was the last descendant of Eli, which I think was kind of interesting. That is interesting. I did not know that. And uh, Ahimeaz uh, uh, is Zadok's son. So the, Zadok the high priest and Abiathar the high priest. Their two sons are the ones that are going into hiding and they have a message for David. Okay? They stayed at a place called Enrogel. Enrogel... It means, uh, in Hebrew, it means, in English, it means fountain of the traveler. And uh, it's at the base of Mount Zion. And it's possibly, from some of the commentaries I, re I read, this is possibly the, the pool of Silo Salon. Yes. Where, 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 the, where they heal, where the healing waters were there. Okay? Okay, so they try to sneak into the city and not be seen. But they're seen by a little lad, it says. And then it says they're helped by a winch. Now, this word winch is not found very many times in the, in the, in the King James Version or in the Old Testament. Uh, it's The word is shipa, which is S-H-I-P-H-A. But it means a, a female servant. Okay? A female servant. So this female servant helps Jonathan and Ahimeaz. Uh, 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 and uh, they, they fled to that city, but then when they were seen, this woman hid them in a well. Okay? Now, in verse 19, it says in King James that they spread ground corn on the top of this, of this well. They would, put, they would put a covering on top of the well, and they would spread seed out on the, on the, uh, on the top of there. Now, one problem with the King James Version... And uh, believe me, there are problems with the King James Version. Right. Uh, even though that's the one I like to read out of. Uh, corn is a North American product. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was not found in the Middle East at this time. So you, you, you probably need another version or maybe you need to understand what it means. Mine says grain. Wheat. Grain, grain wheat. It's actually, now this is interesting because when you start looking up these words, I mean, some people would not look up a word like Corn. You know, I mean, I do. I look up all kinds of things. I appreciate it. But uh, it's, it, there's a whole bunch of different words that were translated corn, wheat, grain. Uh, this one is uh, ripe, ripe, R 
W-H-I-Y-P-H-A-H. And it means pounded wheat. Okay? So what the ladies would do, they would go and pound the wheat and get the chaff out of it, and then they would take it and they would put it on the top of the well to dry parched corn. Okay, so they, they called it corn, that's because King James it called all wheat corn back in the King James day, okay? That's the problem with the language. Okay, so they hid this, they hid them in, 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 the, uh, in the well. Right. Okay, now, uh, they, were, they were able to warn David of Ahithophel's counsel even though Absalom had adopted Hushai's counsel, but they needed to bring word to him. So uh, they, they followed uh, Hushai's counsel. Now, one thing, it, when I was studying this, I, I realized how many times, I just call, I asked myself a question, how many times in the Bible is wells important? Oh my gosh, a lot. Oh man, there were so many when I started looking them up, I, just, I was overwhelmed with scriptures. You were overwhelmed with wells? I was overwhelmed with wells. And you know what? It was a very deep subject. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some of them are pretty shallow. Oh, yes. They're all kind of shallow, aren't they? Okay, well, I passed out this, uh, this uh, Bible Wells. If you don't have a copy of Bible Wells, get yourself a copy. I got my copy. Okay, Bible Wells. Now, I want you to help me out. I want you all to go uh, glance over these and pick one. Some of them are lengthy. Some of them are short. Some are very short. So pick, pick one out. But I found out there's physical wells in the Bible. All through the, the Bible there's wells. And uh, I just recently learned that the, uh, the, the, uh, the Mayan, Mayan country in South America, they found out that that, that country uh, died, basically, because their wells dried up. You know, and, and you notice that all through the Old Testament they would they would they would find wells, dig wells, and sometimes they would destroy wells. Yes. You know? Okay. I got uh, John four six. Okay, come on, let's let's read them. Jacob's well was there and Jesus Christ uh and six you not right. Tired from his long walk sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Okay, so Jesus frequently went to wells. We know that, right? Okay. Now, we, we have well of seven in Genesis, which is interesting. A well of the living one who sees me. Now, y'all see that second one on there? The well of the living one who sees me. Do you know who said that? That was uh, Hagar. When she and Ishmael were cast out into the, into the wilderness, God provided her a well for drinking water. And, and, and she says... It's the well of the living one who sees me. I thought that was pretty cool. That uh, is pretty cool. Uh, because you know that, that even though Ishmael's descendants are the Arabic people. Right. But God loves those people too. Yes, he does. Okay, who, who, who's who got something else here that you want to read? I've got uh, Song of Songs 4, 15, and 16. Okay, the garden. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, thou south, blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat the pleasant fruits. Wonderful. Y'all have y'all ever studied that book? That's a good book to study. Songs of Solomon we talked about it before. It's kind of a difficult book, but it's definitely an allegory. Okay, who's got something else here? Come on, y'all help me out. I have 55, Isaiah 55, 1. Okay, without price. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Wow. That was pretty good. It is. The living water. I, I separated these in physical wells, living water, and then finally the fountain of life. Okay. Anybody else got one? Sea light. Psalms 36, 9. For with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light shall we see light. But well, isn't that true that in his light we see light? That's so good. It's so good. Because I can read the Bible all day long and it can be one dry, dry, dry piece of literature. But with his light on it, it becomes alive. You know, the word of God becomes alive.
How many people have tried to read it without not, not even having the, the Holy Spirit? Not, this, not trying to read it sincerely trying to know who the Lord is. Just read it as, as a book. As a book? And some people read it trying to disprove it. Right. You know, like I read the Koran doing that. I didn't have to disprove it. You know. Right. Okay. In the, in the living water, we have a garden. We have, we're guided to it. It's without price. I like to just read these as I wrote them down. It's the hope of Israel, the living water. It's springing up out of, out of the very most belly. And if any man thirsts, he can come and drink from this fountain, from this, from this well. The fountain of life, we see light. Uh, it is the law to the wise. Some people don't like laws. And if you don't like law, you're not wise. Because there's a law here that God gives. It is the fear of the Lord. And there are two evils mentioned. Let's, let me look that one up. I, I, I need to revisit that. Jeremiah 2.13. Somebody look up that. The last two here, it says, The Lamb will lead you to a fountain of life. And then Revelation 22.17, If any man thirst, come after me. Yes. For my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. Oh, that's what I remember. And who are these people that did that? It's Israel. It's Israel. 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 Isn't that interesting that they dug their own well, and it's a leaky well. <laughs> and when you have a leaky well, anybody that's ever lived in a farm, if you have a, a well that, that seeps other things into it, it's... It contaminates your well. Yep. So your well is contaminated without the Holy Spirit, without God. And that's the problem with the, with the Jewish people. They have rejected Christ. So some are for eternity. Well, that's, that's a good thing. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. I enjoyed studying those wells. And uh, okay, so that brings us now to the demise of Ahithophel. We finally made it to Ahithophel's death. Verse 23. You're looking forward to that? I've been looking forward to it. I don't have to say his name no more. <laughs> <laughs> and when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city. He put his household in order and he hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Oh, man. This was an old man. His name meant Brother of Folly. Right. Uh, everyone went to him for advice. Everybody went to this guy for advice. And then when they decided not to follow his advice, he goes and hangs himself. Oh, poor baby. I know. Poor, baby. <laughs> poor guy. Poor baby. Judas of the Old, of the old Testament. Right? It is the Judas of the Old Testament. And uh, we, we also discussed, y'all weren't here, Frank and Lisa, but we discussed in depth suicide when uh, we discussed it in 1 Samuel when Saul fell on his own sword. That was the first time I had seen somebody commit suicide in the Bible. And then here's, here's Ahithophel committing suicide in the Bible. And he is the first, he is much like Judas, Judas uh, of the New Testament. And uh, his problem was a big problem. It was called pride. Right. There's a lot of ministries that have fallen apart because of pride. Yes. Bands, music, music people fall apart because of pride. Uh -huh. Churches. Churches fall apart because of pride. That's right. Pride goes before the fall, right? Yep. I got three scriptures, four, four scriptures. Y'all ready to look them up for me? <clears throat> Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs 11, 2. So Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs 11, 2. Proverbs 29, 23. And Isaiah 2, 11 through 12. And I just chose those four. There was more, but I chose those four. Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs 11, 2. Proverbs 29, 23. And Isaiah 2, 11 and 12. Proverbs 16, 18. All right. A pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before the fall. A fall. Pride and haughtiness 
Oh, I mean, hotiness. That's a good word, eh? Yes. <laughs> I have Don't Proverbs 29, 23. Okay, Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in the spirit. Honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. You know, in the that's interesting in the Old Testament Proverbs that 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 uh, that Solomon and all, and his writers of, of who backed him up with this knew that humility was the way to to be a king. Yes. And that's how Jesus was when he came. Yes. Okay, who's got the last one? The uh, last two. Isaiah what? Two eleven and twelve. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Yeah, shame comes with pride. You make a big mistake if you're real prideful. I think that was that was which one was that one? Did you? Okay. That was Proverbs. Yeah. So we still got Isaiah two eleven twelve left. Got it, Norma. Isaiah two eleven. Yeah. Human pride will be brought down, and human arrogance will be humbled. Only the Lord will be exalted on the day of judgment. Only the Lord on the day of judgment. All right. So we put Ahithophel in the grave, right? So it seems. Yeah, he's dead. And they did not follow his counsel. They followed his shayots, who was a spy. All right. He did exactly what the Lord told him to do, and they did what the Lord told him to do. Exactly. That's what we found out. All right. It's just like when we said when we pray. If we believe God, it's going to happen, Right? Absalom pursues David, verse 24. Then David came to Mahanan. That's a good one. Mahanan. And Absalom passed over Jordan, and he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab. Which Amasa was a man's son whose name was Ithra, an Israelite that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Jeriah, Zeruiah, excuse me, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. And we're going to stop there. Because Absalom, Absalom is beginning to pursue David. Now, it says David came to Mahanaim. Mahanaim means the encampment. Okay? See, sometimes when we read these words, they actually mean... They may not even be cities. They may be places. Right. Like the encampment here mentioned. Absalom and his men chase David. And David makes uh, Amasa captain. Now, interesting that Amasa is made captain. Do you know who Amasa is? He is Absalom's cousin. So, uh, no, Absalom... No, he's Joab's cousin. Joab's cousin. Well, Joab's also Absalom's cousin. I mean, Joab and uh, Absalom are brothers. Oh, well, then that, yeah. that makes sense, huh? <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. You know, when we study all this, uh, I, I, I've read this before. You know, if you can figure out how, who these clans are and who they're associated with, you can figure out that this is a civil war between some brothers and brothers and dad. And you know, we need a flow chart. We almost do. <laughs> I can go in and get a chart so I can draw on it, you know? You know, I've shown some stuff up there before, but, you know. I mean, like, this, this way we can... Okay, uh, uh, his name, Amasa, means a burden, and uh, he's the son of Ithra, which means wealth. <laughs> and that's kind of interesting. you got a man named Ithra, and he has a little baby, and he calls him a burden. <laughs> his name means I'm rich, and here the child means I'm going to call him my burden. Uh, Abigail means Sometimes source of joy. <laughs> And it says Abigail was the daughter of Nahash. And we know the word Nahash. It means serpent. And uh, Zerariah means wounded. Okay, now, uh, now Israel and Absalom, they encamp in a place called Gilead, which means a heap of testimony. And they are getting ready to fight their dad. This is pretty sad. Yes, it is. Get brothers... Cousins fighting against each other and dad. I know, this is really, if you really put yourself there, it really is sad. It is. Because if, you know, has anybody ever gone to a family reunion gathering and there's one family that didn't get along with another well, family because right? something had happened? And it's just a sad situation. It makes it very tense for everybody else. You're going to side with the side, huh? 
Yeah, you wish <laughs> one of them would have sailed because it makes it yeah. better. Yep. Oh, like that one, what we read earlier, where, where they all get together and they kill they kill one of the brothers. Remember, we, we read yes. that earlier. That was a family reunion. That was a family reunion. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I still got a few more minutes. Right. Let's keep going. And I think I'll, I'll finish this chapter. This is the kindness of Barzillai. And I, I think I put Barzilla on there. I, I got you. I'm with you, Barzilla. I keep thinking Barzilla every time I see that because I'm a, I'm a Godzilla fan. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I just think it because of the Z and the L. Yeah. Okay. It says in verse 27, It came to pass when David was come to Mahanaim, that Shobi, the son of Nahash, of Rabbah, of the children of Amnon, Machir, the son of Amiel, of Lodabar, and Barzilla, Zilei, the Gilead, of Ro Rogalim, brought beds and basins, earthen vessels, wheat, barley, Flour, parched corn, beans, lentils, parched pulse, honey and butter, sheep, and cheese of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat. For they said, the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. All right. So now we see a scene where David and the surrounding people are gathering behind him, you know, and bar. Uh, Barzillai, we find that later on, this is a very old man, and he's brought all these gifts to David. So uh, they come to the encampment, and uh, he's greeted. They're, they're greeted with great kindness. Okay, let's just go through these 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 names, and I have time. I'm going to finish this. Uh, Shobi, his name means captor. He's the son of a snake, right? And Rabbah, it means many are great. And he's the descendant of Ammon, which means tribe of people. Right. Machir means a salesman. He's the son of Amiel, which means people of God. And he's from a place called Lodabar, which means pastureless. And uh, Barzillai means iron-hearted. Now this is interesting, because or heart of steel. This is an old man with a heart of steel. And we find that he helps David greatly. Uh, and he is a, a, a Gileadite, and he's from a city uh, called Rogalim, which Rogalim means fullers or washers of cloth. Okay, now this, they brought some things. Yeah. They brought beds. Right, mine's a sleeping mat. Sleeping mats. Mishkab is the name in Hebrew, and it means a chamber, a sleep. Uh, it is also a euphemism. Do you all know what a euphemism is? It's a nice way of saying sexual intercourse. Okay, that when you when you, when you use this word in Hebrew, it can be either mean a bed or a couch, or it can mean a euphemism for the other thing. But I just brought that up because it said. Okay, the basins. This is a, a Hebrew sap. It's a dish for holding blood or wine, a cup. Then they had earthen vessels, pottery possibly. Uh, it mean, the word is yasir, yasar, Y-A-S-A-R. It means a mold or form or fashion. Then it said they brought vessels. Vessels is keli, which means instruments. It could be weapons, jewels, army, or furniture. I believe it was furniture. And it says here they brought wheat, which is hittah. This is where I was telling you that they have different words for different grains. The hittah is grain. And it says they had barley. You'd think barley and wheat would be almost the same thing, but it's not. Uh, barley is sea ora, and it's a rough grain used to feed the masses. It feeds poorer people. In other words, you had the, the you had the wheat, which you fed the king's people with, and you had the barley, which you fed barley rye to the poor people uh, or to the masses. Then it says there was flour. Uh, Kemma is the word. It means to grind. And then it said they had parched, and it said parched pulse, parched corn. It said parched corn first. And uh, you notice the corn uh, is in uh, italics in the, in the King James, so it's not in the, not in the book. So you have to re look it up. Uh, parched kali, roasted grain, beans, pole, to be thick, lentils. Lentils, guess what lentils means? It means lentils. 
Lentils is a Hebrew word for the for the bean that we call lentils, and I love lentils myself. So. Okay. I like and, and, hey, I also noticed something about this is really cool. You ever, you ever, anybody like spaghetti westerns? I mean, I know I talk a lot about movies, but I like spaghetti westerns too. Did you ever notice that almost every spaghetti westerns has a place where they sit down and they eat something? They eat bean tortillas and then they shoot people. <laughs> <laughs> huh? But I have noticed that also reading book, reading short stories. A lot of times people will, will, will uh, Louis Lamar is really good about it. He will tell you how the campsite is. When you read his books, he'll tell you what they cook. And, and the fact that the, the writer of this, uh, I know this is the Word of God, but this is also a historical document telling you how people ate right. and what they ate. I just think it's wonderful. Uh, right. Here's something else they said. They said they eat, they ate butter and honey. And I found from reading about that is that the butter and honey uh, is a type of refreshing drink that they would drink. Is buttermilk oh, with honey in it. Okay? It was a refreshing drink. That's what they said it was. Uh, and then also I missed one parched pulse, which is roasted beans. So they had roasted grain and they had roasted beans. This was quite a party, really, because here we have them uh, uh, slaughtering animals, having all kinds of food, and, uh, and but not just for David, but for everyone. And I want to close this week's lesson with another scripture. I want you all to read it for me. Somebody look up Psalms 34, 8 through 10. Talking about a feast. Talking about a feast. Psalms 34, 8 through 10. Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in uh, refuge in Him. Fear the Lord for His God, uh, you His godly people. For those who fear Him will all uh, will have all they need. Even the strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. I like that. Taste and yeah. see that the Lord He is good, and His word is good. When you start tasting this word, it will taste good. It'll, it'll, it'll help you out. It'll help your life. Amen. All right. So next week, we will start off in Lesson 18. We finish le Lesson 17. God bless you.